The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, welcome everybody. This is Mrs. Tika Clavel joined by Ms. Katrina Finch. We're going to get the webinar started here in about three minutes. Um, we'll be sharing the screen um, at that time, but in the meantime, if you can hear me, if I can get you guys to raise your hands, and you'll be able to see that in your little chat icon um, on your screen. So if you can just raise your hand and let me know if you can hear me. We'll just do a real quick audio check. Thank you. It looks like everybody can hear me. I'm going to go ahead and put your hands down. Katrina, you want to say hello real quick? Make sure everybody can hear you. Sure. Hey, everyone. It's Katrina Finch. Nice to have you here with us this evening. Looking forward to sharing all kinds of fun information with you. All right. So we're going to go ahead, like I said, and we'll get started in about two minutes. All right, welcome everybody. This is Mrs. Tika Clavel. I am an educator on loan with NCDPI's Digital Teaching and Learning Division. I'm joined by Ms. Katrina Finch from Cumberland County Schools. She will be our presenter this evening. Uh, it's just her and I, and we're expecting a large amount of people. Um, we're so glad that you guys could make it this evening, especially in light of uh, the Hurricane Florence that ran through. So we hope that everybody is doing well. Uh, Katrina will start sharing her screen in just a moment. When we do that, we need to make sure that on the second slide that everybody signs in. We've got a bit.ly there as well as a link that you can click that says registration so if Katrina if you can go ahead and share your screen so everybody can get to that bit.ly um, in the meantime if you have any questions I will be trying to answer them as quickly as I can uh, and we will pause throughout the presentation to get those questions to Katrina so that she can answer them. Also, this session uh, is, this webinar is being recorded. So we hope to get this to you uh, hopefully in the next couple of weeks uh, once we get the recording finalized and that will be sent out via email as well as your certificates of uh, participation. So it is very important that you complete the registration. Uh, the registration, like I said, could be found on the second slide. Uh, Katrina's got that showing right now there is a bit.ly there so if everybody can take care of that right now and we'll get started
All right, Katrina, you are more than welcome to take it away. Thank you, thank you. Um, for those of you guys who are just joining us, if you would like to uh, go to the bit.ly that is provided for you on the screen, um, you can download this presentation or share it and updates will be um, made to it on occasion. Um, welcome this evening. You are in the session for using Power Teacher Pro to impact the bigger picture. I will be fluctuating back and forth between the slide deck as well as the um, actual uh, Power Teacher Pro database um, and gradebook. And hopefully you've gone in and selected the registration and gotten signed in. Um, slide three is a slide that is going to give you information about me if you have any questions after uh, you, we are done with this presentation. Um, please feel free to email me if you need it. And I'm going to go ahead and cover our topics tonight. Um, this presentation was put together, taking a look from the grade book, excuse me, the grade book and um, Power Teacher from the outside in. Um, what can educators and classroom teachers do to um, it, in the grade book and the portal to help parents, to help um, your admin and your data managers, as well as counselors. There's a number of great resources and um, things that we can do to make lives easier for those people um, on the outside of our classroom. So the first thing that we're going to touch on um, is going to be the, what we can provide parents. Um, keep in mind that if we communicate with parents then um, and be proactive, we can field off a number of questions pertaining to um, what's, what is your course going to be about? What is your classroom? How do you grade in your classroom? Um, we're going to go ahead and touch on that and this is this screenshot here is from a um, parent or student view and this is looking at a particular course um, you're gonna see a course the course name um, and then you're gonna see a section description which we're gonna talk about in here in just a little bit and then of course your uh, the grades and attendance is accessible from uh, this particular um, website, or excuse me, this particular page. Um, the first thing we want to do is get an idea of how you plan to set up your um, grading for the year, whether you want to use points, whether you want to use percentages, whether you want to uh, weight your courses, um, and you know, what are the categories you want to use? Once you have all of that set up, um, you're going to, whoops, sorry about that. You're going to want, you're going to want to go in and provide this communication to parents. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. If I am in PowerSchool, I can select Power Teacher Pro. And that will take me into the grade book. Inside the grade book, there are six charms on the left side of the screen um, that will guide us and direct us while we're in the grade book. Um, what we want to do when we're setting up our course description is go ahead to settings and select class descriptions from the setup menu. And as you can see, you, we have all three courses listed here in the um, class description. Um, we can make a change to the class name that will only be seen in our gradebook. 
Um, and then the other thing that we can change is the class description. Now I'm going to go back just a second to the slide, and this is where we're going to see the class description populated once we create it. So in the example that was provided, um, classwork is worth 45 percentage points. We're going to go ahead in this example and um, weight these courses. Classwork is 40, or excuse me, I'm sorry, weight the categories. Quizzes worth 10%. Tests, 20%, and projects are going to be worth 25%. Oops, there we go, 25%. Um, you can make changes to the, um, the text, a couple of different changes text color, the uh, background color, you can um, set up a table if you want to. Once you're done with your class description, in the bottom right corner, you're going to go ahead and select save. Okay, let's say though that you have all of this set up and you have six classes that you just want to go ahead and set up the exact same way. You can go ahead and select all your information and right click and select copy. Go to your next class description and paste. Now, because of the setup um, of Gradebook, it's going to ask you to paste elsewhere, but you're still going to be able to use your copy and paste feature. Okay, so easy way, once you hit save, those class setups will end up populating and show up in section description. Um, were there, are there any questions in, in reference to um, setting up um, the class descriptions. Katrina, I'm not seeing any questions so far. You're doing a phenomenal okay. job. Um, I did have a couple of people mention that your voice keeps cutting in and out. So be close, oh. be close to your mic. Uh, no worries. Is this a little? Yeah, okay. that's much better. Um, awesome. I'm not hearing it, but that doesn't mean they're not hearing it. So wonderful okay. job and we'll keep going. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Okay, let's go back for just a moment. We're going to go to the next um, item on our list, and that is assignments. And um, one of the great things about this um, this application is that it will allow you to set up um, a almost like a little mini web page for each of your assignments if you want to do that. And we are actually going to do that right now. Um, we're going to create a new assignment. Click on create and go to assignment. And we're just going to assignment example. Okay. We're going to go ahead and click on classwork points. We're going to set our points to 100, due date. Now, down here, once you get down here, um, you can for, do a lot of neat things um, in this particular area. As you can see, you can insert a table. You can insert links. All right, you can insert images. And what's going to be great about this is that Every time that you create a description for an assignment, then um, it will create a little mini web page and students, when they click on the assignment in the gradebook, that a window will pop up with these assignment, um, with these assignment descriptions. So we're going to go ahead and go back to this. Um, I'm going to have to 
jump over to Oh, sorry, guys. While you're doing that, Katrina, I do yeah. have a question for you, if you don't mind. Uh, sure. Uh, Constance has asked, she says, I teach third grade. I was wondering mm -hmm. if other elementary teachers break down tests, quizzes, etc. If not, is it better to use points or percentages as everything will be weighted equally? Um, I'm not sure how things are set up in other LEAs. In our LEA, everything is pushed down from the um, from central, and in elementary, um, it's broken down by spelling. Or the actual class is you have a spelling class, you have a reading class, a language arts class, if I'm not mistaken, um, and so you don't necessarily have to put. An, ex an explanation um, and further break the class down into categories. So um, I think that's just going to be something based on your LEA. Um, that's, a that's a really good point, Katrina. Um, Holly had mentioned, she says she teaches third grade and they use percentages per category. So, and I think that highlights that every LEA is different on how they roll that out. And it's really just up to the guidance of your LEA and in some situations, your administration. Uh, Constance, thank you very much for that question. Okay, so um, yes, thank you very much. I went in, what I was doing is um, copying the link that I have set up um, in the presentation. And once I have put text into my box, I have to select my text if I want to link the URL, okay? Keep in mind, URL is Universal um, Resource Locator. That is going to be your web address. And I'm going to go ahead and I hit Control V to paste that and click OK. And as you can see, it went from black to a blue with an underline. And that tells me that that is now a linked, um, that is now linked text. Um, if I went ahead and pasted the information straight, it looks like gobbledygook, for lack of a better term. And I would like to keep everything clean and neat. So I would prefer to go ahead and provide my text for exactly what I want and add a link instead of pasting the URL into the description. Um, and the next thing that we want to do is we're going to add a picture. And I can't copy and paste a picture. I have to insert my image using the um, toolbar and the icon image. I'm going to go ahead up back here and grab this image. Keep in mind that if you are going to use an image or a link, it needs to be made public or available to anyone um, who is going to try to uh, get go to that link. Um, and that's going to be really, really important. Otherwise, you're going to have broken links. Um, now, I don't want my image to take up my whole screen, so I'm going to drop it down just a little bit. I'm going to center the image and go ahead and click OK. And so now we have an we have this assignment that when a student goes and looks at the assignment from the grade book and they click on the assignments hyperlink, this is going to populate for them and they'll be able to go to the rubric that is provided um, and see this image, et cetera. Um, any questions on that particular assignment, or not assignment, but um, on this feature? 
Hi, Katrina. Sorry, I am diligently trying to get to everybody here. It's it's a lot. So um, India has asked, if you weight all categories the same, do the weights automatically make the assumption or do you have to set up weights? And if the categories are the same, do you have the description in or is there an automatic description to choose from? Um, I am going to, if it's okay, I am going to postpone the answer to that. I do address uh, categories later on in this um, in this presentation. Perfect. So I'm going to postpone that question or the answer to that question. Wonderful. And I'm sure she doesn't mind. Thank you very much. Um, let me check real quick and let me look. Um, Okay, so Tim, uh, who is a high school art teacher, he says, can you save the setup information from semester to semester and from year to year? Um, from what I understand with the upgrade, um, you should be able to do that. I do suggest, however, that you go ahead and um, at least once a year set up a fresh class um go in set up your categories for first quarter copy it to your other three quarters and then you can copy that um class setup to your other courses um i'm really hesitant to say yes that's going to work great because i do know that there were some hiccups um, at least in our county when people tried to copy the um, class setups from previous year the previous year i'm awesome. not sure if that's what you were looking for and i'm gonna see if he said anything here i think a lot of that is especially the high school and, and Tim correct me if I'm wrong here a, a lot of what people like to do is is that canvas blend right so in canvas you can do those things the same setup and repeat those things um, and because canvas works with power teacher pro um, a lot of people assume that that same functionality is there and that is not necessarily always the case so um, he hasn't said anything here but uh, let me see if I have any other questions okay Stella's got something hold on okay so Stella says will the things placed in the description print out on the report cards and are you um, and you are mentioning students seeing these things do you mean parents when they log on to home base she says she's a bit confused okay so um, I'm gonna go ahead back to this example um, and I'm hoping that you guys can see this pretty well. Um, let me go ahead. So from here, this view is the same view that students see. Um, and so parents are gonna be able to pull up that assignment detail. So you can, I, I didn't have a really good shot I didn't do a um, shot of this, a screenshot, but if I am looking and I click on this assignment and I have a description that's going to, um, and it is hyperlinked, it will populate a new window and provide all of the detail, including your links um, for your text, as well as your images. Um, and I'm gonna, go back into Power Teacher Pro because um, you can't see it very well. I mean, it's hard to see it, but for people who are familiar with um, programming in HTML, which is um, how a lot of websites and web pages are coded, um, that is what these descriptions are, how these descriptions are set up. Um, they basically water it down for the for the teachers so that they can create a little tiny web page that has all the functionality of a regular web page where you can have your links, you where you can have some text, where you can have your pictures, and that'll populate in both the student and the parent uh, portals. Hope that helped.
Yeah, I, I, I think we're good there. Um, I have one more question before we can move on. Dorothy asked, what happens when a teacher has set up their grade book like you did, but only assigns one category, let's say a test, and does not have any other grades or assignments? I think that's a great question. You, and I think you might be talking about this a little later. She says, um, I was asked this and did not feel comfortable with giving an answer. And I appreciate that too, Dorothy. That happens to me sometimes too. Um, I am going to touch on missing grades a little bit later um, and working more with uh, grades in general. So I will, if we can bring that question back out um, when I discuss the admin side of things, that would be great. Yep, I'll keep her question up. So Dorothy, okay. don't let me forget. We'll, we'll bring that up later. Please continue, okay. Katrina. Thank you. All right, awesome. So now what we're going to be looking at is what we can do to help our our counselors um, and this is probably a little bit more geared towards our middle school and high school teachers um, from power teacher pro we don't always get to see um, we don't always get to see the info we need for our students and sometimes they need things printed out um, so one of the things I just wanted to touch on um, were some of the, pro, uh, excuse me, some of the reports that you can look at and print if need be in the teacher portal. Um, so in order for us to see information about students, we find the class or course that the student is enrolled in and we select the icon that looks like a backpack and we end up with our students listed on the left hand side and we're going to go ahead and just choose Aaron and this is a basic schedule for Aaron and the nice thing is um, is we can print this for him um, we can also look up the demographics for Aaron uh, which we can also do in the um, port or excuse me in the grade book um, we can do a quick lookup as well all right um, to see how he's doing in his other classes and just like parents and students can click on the grade and it'll pull up the assignments same thing can happen in this quick lookup um, again we can go to the schedule and my students being middle school students at the change of the semester um, when their electives change or even high school students when you go from um, the first part half of the year to the second half of the year they may forget what their schedule is we don't necessarily have to send them to the counselor we can print it from here um, there are a lot of other interesting um, reports that you can look at here um, and at a high school level they come in really handy you have your graduation plan progress um, and photo the student photo teacher comments if your school is using that um, feature so a number of things going on in the portal that you can use that would really help counselors um, out so we're not constantly sending students to counselors for um, reports um, any questions I know I flew through that but any questions about those reports um, Naya had a question and I was in the process of answering it, but I'll, I'll let you go okay. ahead and hit that. Um, she says, if categories and weights are pushed out by LEA and dis at, at district level, how are the weights distributed among unused categories? And now my understanding is if the LEA pushes out those weights and categories that any additional categories that are put in are not weighted. Is that a correct statement? Um. Um, I would think that that is the case right. because, and here's what happens with that. I'll use uh, SchoolNet for, for an example. When, when you import um, any items from SchoolNet, SchoolNet is automatically going to create a category called test. No, you know, even if you have 
a category called test already, you're still going to get a category called test. And nothing is going to happen with that grade if that cat um with because that category is not has not been um given any percentages within the class setup so for instance if i want to use the grades that i import from schoolnet all i have to do is go into um a schoolnet the into the assignment and change the category um let's see if i can show you this as i'm saying it so if i want to change this pre-assessment from test and click on edit assignment there's red test i would um again if schoolnet uh i imported grades in schoolnet i might have two test um categories what I would do is I would just change the um, category that's associated with that particular assignment if I wanted it to be weighted, or excuse me, if I wanted it to be calculated. Um, if I don't want it to be calculated, um, it, or if I don't want an assignment to be calculated, there is a feature um when you are creating assignments and editing assignments that says count and final grade and if you uncheck that it will not count that um assignment in the final grade within that category or anywhere else in the class setup that's an excellent point katrina i, I know um, when i was in the classroom i often used that feature for you know doing um turn-ins you know if a student turned in like their their science sign uh permission slip or something just to show parents what has and hasn't been turned in obviously that isn't a grade but i still wanted that feature to communicate to parents through the parent portal uh, of what is missing um, i've got a couple of more questions here Okay. Um, uh, Anita asked if you can print student transcripts. Um, highly doubtful. Um, I agree. I now, think that has to be handled I, at the data manager, correct? Um, I would assume so. Um, I can, if I want to do just a, not a transcript, but just a general current snapshot, I can go to my term grades um, and check out what's going on. But mm -hmm to create a transcript all the way through um, their high school career, um, I, th I think that's a little bit more locked down than what the teachers are able to um, access. Right, and a lot of that is guided because of federal and state um, privacy uh, laws. Um, I have an, uh, Ms. Anita said thank you. Um, we have another question. Um, how uh, this is from Maria? How do you make all the assignments seen or viewed in one page? Um, so let's see here. Let me discard my changes. Um, I'm assuming that you want to. I'm, are is this? What the look that I just changed it to if I click on grading and go to assignment list um, is this what you're trying to achieve I'm not really I, I think that's following what she's talking about we'll see uh, okay while we're waiting on Maria's response Brian made a, a very important statement I appreciate that Brian he says remember mm -hmm. though if you make a category and assign a weight to it you need to use that category or it will spread the weight out to other um, use categories and that's an important point and I think Katrina you're going to be talking yes. about that with missed assignments so Brian mm -hmm. thank you for making that comment um, yes okay okay we can um, I, we're gonna yep. go ahead now um, the last the last topics that we're going to cover um, have to do with what the teachers, what we as teachers do in the classroom that impact our um, the data manager and their job and our administration. Um, one of the biggest things that I have seen is, um, and it's one of the biggest topics that are 
that's discussed um, by data managers is the fact that teachers um, we have as teachers we have a tendency to be a little slack on reporting attendance um, and I, I as a elective teacher at a middle school I am not responsible for putting in any attendance because at the middle school level um, in our county we take attendance daily now if I was a high school teacher I take attendance for each course I teach. Um, and at the elementary level, you know, once a day daily. Regardless of um, regardless of how often you are having to take it, it is so important to remember that attendance is actually, it is the job of, um, it is one of our jobs as teachers to take attendance. Um, and it, because it, correlates with what's going on with the grade. Um, the information that I have on the next couple of slides, I'm not going to go over. I, it's all provided for you how um, the general statute lays out information in pertaining, excuse me, in reference to attendance. Um, this was an important area. It, it, it even states power school. Um, whoever the teacher is that is the lead teacher for a course. Um, it is their it is their job to record absences because what happens is your social or excuse me your um, your social worker at the school they're being legally bound to report kids in excess of uh, who have um, ten or more days absence. Um, and we have I know at our in our LEA, we have to send out letters for three, five, and 10 day. Um, and under the statute, there's these two pieces right here focus directly on us as teachers. Um, we are to record absences and the absent reason codes accurately for the 10 day rule and to maintain accurate student accounting records. Um, so why is this also important? Because it plays into um, how much money your school is getting based on um, a report that is run monthly. It's called the principal's monthly report. And the data that is um, generated from the principal's monthly report helps with evaluating what's going on in the school, planning for teachers, um, your allocation of funds, and whether or not you're in compliance with federal and state regulations because students who have IEPs there were federally mandated to make sure that those students have um, whatever their IEP says they need to have it's the job of the school to make sure they have it so if they need a one-on-one -on -one person we have to come up with the money the schools have to come up with the money based on attendance to pay any people they have to hire in. Um, so let's re retract for just a second and think back to when we had to do the 10 days at the beginning of the school year um, and we were so frustrated and everybody was um, you know hot under the collar when it came to um, those first 10 days attendance but the reason everybody stresses at that time is people's jobs hang in the balance based on those first 10 days. Um, this summer when I presented this information, somebody shared that their school lost a position as a result of people in the school not putting the attendance in correctly. So again, um, it is, it's crucial on a level that goes outside of your classroom. Um, so what does attendance look like when you're taking attendance? Um, I'm going to go slide back here and go to the screen. When we take attendance, we click on the chair and it's going to bring up this attendance screen. Um, the way we do things at um, our school, and I believe it's throughout our LEA, all we do 
is mark an unexcused absence for any student not present in our class and we type in no note and click OK. And then if that student brings a note in, we, the teacher, are responsible for getting that note to the attendance clerk or the person deemed um, over attendance in your school and they will take care of providing the um, correct code. Again, as important as attendance is, it's important to get those codes correct because some students are going to be homebound and we don't know it. Some students are going to be um, out because of military and that that's a whole different um, aspect that um, attendance clerks are going to be paying attention to and marking. Um, but attendance is crucial. And so what happens with attendance is our data managers during the day in the mornings um, at, and probably at the high schools for each class, they will run a couple of, they can run a couple of reports. Um, so by about eight, eight o'clock, um, data manager is going to run a report that's uh, called teachers missing attendance. And that's that's important because it's going to show you the list of teachers who have not submitted their attendance. Um, the daily functioning of the school is, uh, relies on this information. Uh, number one, we need to know where you, the students are. You know, with you know with our with the hurricane situation, um, with flu season. If I have five students out in a class on average and I have five to ten people who are not putting attendance in on time, that's 25 to 50 students that I may not be able to account for. So that's going to have an impact at the front office if somebody comes looking for their students. But you also impact the lunch count. Data managers talk to the lunch um, to the lunch and cafeteria managers on a daily basis. This is how many students are absent. And um, I can promise you, if you're the last class going to lunch every day, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Because um, if people are not getting their attendance in on time, then maybe there's not enough lunches and we get to have peanut butter and jelly or ham and cheese sandwiches instead of a nice hot lunch. Um, one more report on attendance and then we'll take um, questions. Um, at the beginning of the day, at the end of the day, um, daily attendance report can be run. And what this report is going to provide is the attendance, uh, it's going to show which students are actually absent, not, not um, within the classroom, but generally speaking, whether or not that student is physically there at the moment. Um, and again, you know, whether or not it's in the morning after a certain time period, um, you know, that starts to have an impact on that child's um, education because they're going to be missing hours of class um, and that does add up. So um, we're going to stop with the attendance. I will answer any questions that I can um, and we'll continue on for afterwards. Okay, um, so oh, we have uh, a question from Danielle. Is there a way teachers okay. can print the attendance for the end of the nine weeks? Um, to be honest, I am not really sure. If you can, it is going to be, let me go back just a moment. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. It will be back on the, um, for the individual, not for the individual, I'm so sorry. Um, Tika, help me out here. Yeah, so I think, and, and I'm, I'm trying to remember correctly, this, the attendance, cannot be printed by the teachers, oh, however, can be okay. verified by the teacher. Okay. We can only see student by student. 
Um, okay. We can't do like a whole class attendance sheet. Um, uh, Helen did right. say that attendance for quarters can be done. Helen, can you okay. uh, mention, uh, is this for teachers or is this data managers? Because from uh, my understanding, that functionality is not there for teachers. Um, as far as a whole class. Yes, I do understand there it can go. be done student class. to student. Okay, we found it. Um, okay. Class attendance audit. So go to your report drop menu, um, click on print a report. You should have the class attendance audit um, and the dates you'd like to submit. And we should be able to populate it. Um, so because this database is, um, it's a dummy database. Yeah, we're not going to be able to go ahead and pull all of the reports like we would like to. Um, but again, if you are at the start page and you go to your backpack and go ahead and select a student so we can get to um, the drop menu. Click on print a report and click on your class attendance audit. Did that help? I hope that helped. Yeah, a and I think bit. you walked through exactly what uh, Helen described here. So awesome. high five both of you guys. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And again, we're working in a in a uh, training site version, so sometimes it's a little difficult for us to take, you know, the live version to the training site. So we appreciate y'all's um, understanding and patience on that. And Helen, thank you so much for walking us through that. And again, Helen, you know, as she says, teachers, you're going to go to the meeting attendance, go to the multi-day, change the date range, the reporting term, select the term, um, and. And there, and that's exactly what uh, Katrina showed. So again, thank you, Helen. Um, let me just get through these questions real quick. Tammy also mentions that you can print an attendance report from the start menu and click on the grid icon to customize a paper copy. So there's another version there that you might want to. Um, from the start menu? That's what she said. From the start menu, click on the grid icon and customize the paper copy. Ah, uh, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yep, awesome. And okay. thank you, Tammy. And I'm just trying to get through all of these. Um, I think I've got everything. Yep, I think I got everything. So far. So yes, um, we are at the, the 15 minutes left mark, everybody. So as you have these questions, please bring them in. I'm trying to get to them as quickly as possible. Um, and just to kind of reiterate, Katrina, those questions that we had from earlier um, from okay. Dorothy and in India about the if you weight all the categories of the same weights automatically, which is your, I know you're going to talk about with missing mm -hmm. grades. Um, and that's kind of the same line what, what Dorothy was talking about. So and I've left those up. So okay. Ready when you All are. Right. All right, sounds good. Um, we're gonna go ahead back here now um, and touch on the gradebook categories. Um, in our county, they have um, they have locked down the categories that we can use in our gradebook, um, and that initially frustrated a number of people, and I'm sure it probably still does. The nice thing about locking down the number of categories is that um, throughout our county, if a student is transferred from one school to another, you're going to see te like the same three or four uh, grade categories no matter where you go within our county. Um, and that's something to keep in mind. Um, so that there's consistency within your school as well when it comes to weighting your categories. Um, I know that at our school, we stress that all six 
grade science teachers have the same weights. Um, all sixth grade math teachers have the same category weights. All seventh or sixth grade ELA teachers have the same category weights. And that's so that um, we have consistency throughout. I'm sure that you guys have all experienced um, situations where, you know, you have one or two people in the school and kids are continuously, you know, passing the classes um, because the weights are completely different than the weights and, um, you know, within the rest of the department or um, or vice versa, you know, kids are failing because of the weights. Um, try, I would stress to administrators, you know, try to keep your departments um, talking and, um, you know, use the those site-based decisions to um to provide um consistency um within your departments uh at your school um if you have i'm going to go to a class setup real quick um go to settings traditional grade calculations and my quarter one um so if I want to use categories, um, it's automatically going to um, go ahead and keep each category at one uh, or at the same weight. Um, so if you're a points person and you want it to be the same, you know, you have that option. Um, you can also go in and make changes here um, to whoop, to all of your um, to all of your items here to all your categories um, so that so that you end up with a hundred percent just make sure that whatever you weight your categories um, you uh, end up with a hundred percent total um there have there were questions um in a previous presentation of this information um you know what if you do not have something in um one of your categories as you know previously mentioned that means your other categories are going to automatically um shift in their percentage um that's just that's kind of the nature of the beast um and i've also been asked well how many grades should you have for each category um i am not the expert at this i'm not the grade police but to be fair to my students i try to make sure that i have anywhere from three to five grades for each category if not more so that um each student um, has a fair chance at a nice average. So if they had an off day that um, they're not and they bombed a test, they're not. It's not going to hurt them tremendously. Um, so that's just that's something to um, consider. That is just something to consider um, when you're putting all this together. Did I do that right? Um, so um, I hope I touched on a couple of those questions. Um, if you decide to make changes to your class setup, it is super important. You can still do that. Make sure you communicate it to your parents. Um, if you do that, make sure make make doubly sure that you go in and um that you make changes uh to your um to your grades um and um you need to you're going to have to recalculate all of your final grades so that so that um under traditional oh, i'm sorry i'm having i'm having a moment here um cuz i shifted to what i was thinking um 
give me just a moment. I'm going to cheat for just a moment since I took you guys here. No worries. While you're doing that, Katrina, I just okay. want to um, mention a couple things. Pat and Donna brought up some really uh -huh. good points about how their districts are handling grades. And uh -huh. like, for example, Donna mentioned that their district automatically drops the lowest score. So she mentions, you know, oh, okay. it's super important to make sure that you check that or uncheck that for your classes. And then Pat mentioned that they do uh, a very interesting split, 40% um, for minor grades, 50% for major grades and 10% for homework and participation Ooh. and intervention. Wow. And that's sixth grade. And I think that, and I'm so glad you guys mentioned that because every LEA, every LEA, and in my line of work, I, I get an opportunity to, to interact and learn from a whole lot of districts on the Eastern half of the state, including charter schools. And I'll tell you what, every single one of them does it different. Every one, nobody does it the same. So it just shows you the flexibility um, that Power Teacher Pro offers and, um, like I said, just having that kind of in the back of your mind and understanding that if your LEA pushes that out, any sort of changes need to be um, shared with your LEA and your data manager because you might make a change in your Power Teacher Pro and it will not show up in those grades because they already have something in place. And I think that you've emphasized that. So I, I appreciate that. And thank you again, Donna and Pat, for sharing that. Excellent. Um, I found what I was looking for. So. If you go in and you make changes to um, to your category setups, to the weights, it is not going to automatically make changes to the grades that have already been put into the book. So you're going to have to go to your grading charm and select traditional grades and go all the way over to the right to your gear and recalculate those final grades and select all of the um, classes that you're going to want to recalculate. Um, and that's something nice to do um, at each progress report at if you need um, just in it kind of covers um, any mishaps that might have been uh, done inadvertently through the through the semester um, and I'm gonna go ahead and do one more grade book fix um, since I'm here um, as you can see I will go ahead back to my um, score sheet um, for those of you guys who can see this and I'm hoping it's most of you um, Let's see if I can pull, make this a little bit bigger. Um, there's, this one looks a little strange. Um, here we have an A and 52%. Um, obviously, something's going on. And what is going on is that this has been manually overridden. Um, I had some people run into this. They said, you know, I'm adding assignments. And my, you know, the student's final grade is not changing. Um, in order for this to be fixed, we're going to go ahead and click on that final grade um, for the class, or not, the, not necessarily the final grade, but the um, current grade for the class. And you're going to go all the way over to your right and select this refresh arrow. And once you click on the refresh arrow, it's going to recalculate the grade and provide the updated grade. And when that happens, that triangle is removed from um, that grade or from the window. Um, I'll show you what that looks like again for those of you guys who didn't see. If I go in here, I manually override this and I add grades. Or, but nothing's happening. So nothing's calculating. Um, then if there is a triangle in the corner, you're going to go ahead and click on that box. You're going to refresh the grade and allow it to recalculate. And the reason why this, whoops, let's go ahead of here. And the reason why this didn't work um is 
I don't it, I don't know why it didn't have an impact. I guess it didn't have an impact. It could have been that um, I don't have it associated with the correct category. Um, oh, there it is. Okay, it did. Once I hit save, it ended up recalculating. It reverted back and then recalculated the new assignment. Sorry about that. Um, but two ways, two things to fix if your gradebook isn't calculating correctly. One, um, recalculate all your grades or uh, number to go in and check any grades that might have been overridden. Um, any questions on those? I know I slid and jumped to a whole different follow acts, but um, I think I was falling in with the uh, gradebook category subject on yeah, that. Sure. Uh, we are at about two minutes left, Katrina. Um, India asked, um, she wanted to see if you could show where the button was to drop the lowest grade. Okay, um, button to drop the lowest grade. Let me go ahead, let me pull that down. Um, so we're gonna go to the settings and traditional grade calculations. Um, I'm sorry, it's going to be, sorry, I believe it's under categories. And we're going to edit that category. And, oh my goodness, where is the drop, Tika? Oh, my mic was off. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Oh, here I'm talking. <laughs> like, wait a minute. <laughs> my mic is off. Go figure. Um, so this is the update because this was not previously allowed. Oh, there um, it is. Yep. So you you caught me right as I was going to get into it. So yeah, there it is. <laughs> sorry about that. I knew I knew it had to do with your the categories. I couldn't remember if it was setting up with the category. Um, you can drop your OS or uh, lowest overall, or you can drop by category. Um and it'll let you select that category. So let me go ahead and walk you through that one more time because I wasn't very um, confident with that answer for you until I found it. Um, in order to go in and drop the lowest grade, you're gonna click on your settings charm. Go ahead and pull your traditional grade calculation and select actions and this is how the grade is calculating for that quarter. And you're gonna have a tab that says, uh, that is labeled drop low scores. And from here you will drop either your lowest overall. And what's nice with the lowest overall is you can go ahead and um, change the number of scores to drop. Um, or you can go in drop lowest by category and let's say you give lots and lots of quizzes, you can put in a quantity of how many to drop within this particular category. Um, if you want to drop in multiple cat uh, categories, you can go ahead and drop in multiple categories as well. I wouldn't say drop five. I'm just putting that, putting it out there that you can um, increase the quantity past the number one and just go ahead and click on save and you're good to go. Awesome. Well, thank you, Katrina. That brings us to about the end of our time together. Um, on slide 33 of the presentation is our feedback form. We would greatly appreciate to hear back from you guys. Um, again, we appreciate your patience. Uh, normally, we have two of us facilitating, and we have a lot of people participating today, so I tried to give a due diligence to get to all of you guys and to get those questions to Katrina. If you feel like we've missed your question, please let us know in that feedback and we hopefully can get to you. Um, you can also email um, either Katrina or myself, and I'm not sure if our, our contact information is on there. I think Katrina's might, but um, I can be emailed. And matter of fact, I'll put it in the slide deck for you guys. Um, in the chat, I will send my email. So if you have any questions, I've just sent my email address. Please feel free to reach out to me. We are recording this session um, and we will get that recording to you. One last thing that I wanted to share with the group, 
We will be emailing out certificates, hopefully, uh, of participation this week. Uh, you will not get it automatically um, because we'll be verifying attendance. So once we get that going, we will get those certificates to you. If you do not get the certificate, please let us know. You can either email myself or Tiffany Kinney. Um, but thank you guys so much for hanging in with us. We have kept attendance at the um total from the beginning to the end so we appreciate you guys have a wonderful evening and thank um, you again can Katrina. I, yeah can i interject real quick Tika? absolutely um on slide number 34 if you have questions and um or would like some video follow-up um please feel free to go ahead and click on opinion um i have a number of videos that i'm going to be providing um, for the topics that I did not get to cover. And, and if you fill out the information, I'll be more than happy to go ahead and um, get those questions answered um, and get the how-to videos uh, to you guys so you can share amongst your staff as well. So my little plug, hopefully uh, I can help you guys out. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Yep, thank you. And I will be putting the link to the feedback form into the chat, uh, matter of fact, right now. So for those of you that are asking for a direct link to that feedback, I went ahead and put it in the chat for you. Uh, lots of great praises for you, Katrina. And again, thank you very much. Y'all have a wonderful afternoon or evening. Mm -hmm.